Ah, there we are. Nice little Cosmo. Morning everybody, my name's Kev Russell. Uh, this is our second video on, uh, on macro photography. Today I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, my settings for the Olympus camera, which I've been using since 2016. And actually prior to that as well, when I was using Canon, I used pretty much the same sort of settings. Um, if you want to see any of the results of, uh, of my shots, uh, my Flickr account URL will be at the end of this video. Okay folks, my style of macro photography is run and gun. And uh, I don't use a tripod. It's all handheld. And what makes that possible is using a flash. It's um, much better using flash than uh, doing sunlight shots or just normal light. Okay, my style of photography for macro is um, I, I chase insects that are on the move and luckily we might find some that are stationary but most of the time most of the insects are on the move so I use autofocus, I range in on the subject, I continually press the autofocus button until I get the composition right and then I take the shot and the flash stops the motion. I see you. Okay, folks, this is where the, the part where we start discussing how to set your Olympus camera up for macro. These are my own personal settings. I use these pretty much all the time. They very rarely change. I don't need to change them because I set the flash up in such a way that I compensate the light with the, uh, with the flash. But my settings are always uh, at 1 250th of a second. Um, I think the 1 250th is the maximum sync speed for the Olympus camera. Um, I usually like 1 250th of a second because I get a nice black background in most of my shots. I am thinking of going down to about 1 200th. There are others that use way slower speeds than that. But these are my own personal preferences. So I'm saying 1 200th to 1 250th of a second for your, for your shutter speed. My aperture is always f11, mainly for the depth of field. I get a very good depth of field out of f11. Sometimes I may go to f16, but I don't go any higher than f16 because diffraction can occur uh, and that ruins your photos. The lower the, uh, the lower the the number of f8 and so forth, the less depth of field you have. So f11 is what I set for my depth of field. The ISO is always base ISO for the Olympus camera, which is 200. I always set it at 200. It, all these settings never change. As I said, the only, only thing that changes is the, um, the flash, the flash power. If we use the, the rear control the button on the um, on the back of the camera, the OK button, that'll bring up the super control panel. And in the super control panel, you can set every setting that you need for your camera. Top one is uh, ISO, which is set to 200. We come down further and this left hand column and that's your image stabilization settings. SIS auto is full, full image stabilization which is about 5.2 stops of image stabilization, I believe. Uh, MIS is sensor shift and digital for the focal length. Of, you can set your focal length in there as well. But it's always set on M-IS on one. We go across and it goes to raw. Okay, that's I always set the camera on raw. I don't take photos in JPEG. I prefer to take them in RAW and then edit them later on and save as a JPEG later on. The shutter uh, is always set to single, single shutter, a uh, single shutter speed, because I always take my photos in single shutter 
um, operation and the um, the focusing screen is the next one up. I always set the focus point as the smallest focus point that it's available and I always have that set in the middle and I can compose that when I'm taking the subject to focus on the eye of the subject by moving the arrows left, up, left, right, up, down to get the focus point where I need to have it. White balance is always auto and if you go right over to the right hand side at the top I set my colour balance to natural. The uh, only other one that I would say is turn your face recognition off because uh, sometimes when you're trying to focus on a subject there may be other things in the, in the uh, frame that might take away the focus point from the subject itself. But the focus point is always the eye, it's always single shot and I usually range in on my subject until I get it in focus and then I take the shot. Stop moving. Stay still. Okay folks, we're going to talk about how to set up the Miki Speedlight MK320 for your macro photography. Okay, let's just turn it on. We use this button on the right. You'll notice in the top left hand corner it says TTL. That's through the lens metering. We're going to be using manual uh, operation today so we just press the mode button to get it to manual. You see now the, the M button, uh, the M uh, sign is up in the top left hand corner and you'll notice that it's on 1 16th power. Now to change the power we go down the bottom, we press the, the set button and to adjust that to go up we press the right button it takes it up to one eighth of a second go right up there and to change it the other way we press the left button and that will take it down and go all the way down to one sixteenth one thirty two and even lower but Mostly we set it, try to set it for 1 16th and um, if you need to adjust it, just adjust it either way with the buttons left and right. You can add or take away one stop of, um, of uh, exposure on both those buttons. Once you've got it right, just press the button in the middle and that'll set that as, as, your, um, as your primary point. The uh, Miki Flash also has a modelling light which comes on if you press the, the on off button one more time after turning it on. It goes out after you take one shot so if you want to use it again you have to turn it back on again. Once the shot's taken it goes off. To start it back up turn it back on again. Okay that's about all with the Miki flash. We also use Godox flash for macro photography as well. A lot of people starting to use that and we'll go through that one next. Okay we've been talking about the Miki MK320 flash. I've been using Miki since I started in 2016 for the, for the Olympus gear but recently Olympus have released a new lens. It's a 90mm macro lens um, and it lends itself to photo stacking whereas the uh, the 60mm lens that I'm using on my other camera uh, is very good for single shot because the depth of field is so good. The depth of field in the in the 90mm macro lens is not so good obviously because it's a, a longer focal length. So it lends itself to photo stacking which you can do in camera with the, with the Olympus camera. Um, to be able to sync the flash to the uh, to the uh, uh, stacking procedure, uh, you need a flash that will will uh, keep up with the um, with the uh, sync. The V three hundred and fifty is very very good for that. 
uh, it sinks with every shot. It comes with a lithium ion battery which is rechargeable and this is a hard thing to open. I find it very find it very difficult but that's the lithium ion battery that comes with it. It comes with a charger as well so you just take the battery out plug it into the charger when it's charged you just put it back in lock it in place and it's right to go. Okay now with this one uh, set up is easy just press the button to turn it on you'll see it's on TTL same thing as the Miki we just press the uh, mode button we can change it to manual. Now 1 8th power is what I usually use with the uh, with the Godox unlike the Miki I use 1 16th power but 1 8th power is, is perfect for the for the Godox. Now to change that all you need to do is just rotate the, the dial you can go down to 1 4th in 1 3rd increments or you can go up the F6 to 1 16th power in 1 3rd increments as well but 1 8th power is what I use for the, uh, for the V350 with the uh, 90mm macro lens. Okay um, what we've had with the Miki flash was the, uh, the little modelling and focusing light which was built into it. The Godox flash, uh, the V350 and the TT350 don't have that feature built in. So what I've done is I've sourced an LED light uh, from elsewhere uh, and I attach that to the Godox flash by way of a Velcro and just put that on the on the flash like so so that when you're taking your photo there's a nice bright light that you can that goes through and flat and lights up the uh, the uh, diffuser so that you can highlight the subject that you're taking a photo of it's very very good for for night photography and for highlighting subjects that are in dark locations and you can't quite get focus on. So the modelling light actually gives you that light, enough light to, um, to focus on your subject. It's quite bright. There is two, two adjustments on it. The third adjustment you don't need. It's a flashing strobe, so we don't need that. But um, yeah, the light is very bright and um, it works quite well. And it sits on there very good with the uh, with the Velcro. That's all you need to hold it on. It needs to be modified though. As you can see, I've had to uh, cut part of it away, and um, that just makes it easier to fit on there, and it makes it a bit lighter as well. It's a, a very lightweight alloy. This one, get these from China. He's gone. 